While they sin not before their God, they prospered because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. So he, so he told them, after he told them the story of Israel and what we've done, he says, while they sin not, they prospered. The most high God is with them. Right? Read. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them. When we did what? When they from, excuse me, but when they departed from the way which he appointed them. Which would be the commandments, right? Keeping the laws of God, read. They were destroyed in many battles, uh -huh. very sore. So he's like, all the times they've been destroyed is because they departed from sin. Now, keep in mind, this is another nation that's speaking this. It's, so I want you to understand. They understand our history. They understand how to get us, uh, how to destroy us, and why we lost the battles that we lost. Right? Keep reading. And were led captive into a land that was not theirs. Uh-huh. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. Read. And their cities were taken by the enemies. You see that? So he's telling them, as soon as they had sinned, the Lord jacked them up. They were destroyed. They were able to take them over. Keep reading. But now are they returned to their God. Uh-huh. And are come up from the place where they were scattered. Ah, read. And have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country. You see that? So he's saying, but now they have returned to their God. They're keeping the commandments, right? Read. For it were desolate. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. If there be any error, any sin in this people. And they sin against their God. Uh -huh. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. This shall be their ruin. He's saying, Understand this. If we know they're in sin, it's their ruin. We can destroy them easily. Read. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. This is the other nation saying that. So they know they can't beat us by any uh, means unless we are in sin. So if the other nations knew that, how much you think Esau studied this? Okay, keep reading. But if there be no iniquity in, the, in their nation. If there's no sin with the Israelites. Let my Lord now pass by. Leave them the hell alone. Lest their Lord defend them uh -huh. and their God before them. Uh -huh. And we become a reproach before all the world. Because they know the Lord will, will, will use the Israelites to destroy them all. He said, you know what? So what we're going to do, if we can get them in sin, then we'll attack. If not, we're going to leave them alone. Okay. Go to Psalm 64. Remember that. He says, if, I, if we can get them in sin. Psalm 64. In verse 1. Psalms chapter 64 and verse 1. Read. Hear my voice, O God, uh -huh. in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. These other nations. Read. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Wait a second. This is David in the spirit, right? He says, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. All right, read. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Read. Who wet their tongue like a sword. Who do what? Who wet their tongue like a sword. Uh-huh. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Uh-huh. Even bitter words. Even bitter words. Read. That they may shoot in secret at the, at the perfect. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Ah, okay. So they understand. Remember, we just read... What did Halophanes say? Hey, if they in sin, we can destroy them. So they says to shoot at the per shoot and secret at the perfect read. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They fear not, read. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Uh-huh. They commune of laying snares privily. Traps. What do you think those traps are? Traps to keep you in sin. Listen, they know we can't just go out and attack. Because if they're in righteousness, we're going to lose. But if we can set traps for them, what could be the trick? Think about traps today. What would be a trap? Drugs, uh, guns in our community, low income, all the stuff that we see that's engineered. The projects is exactly that, a project, an experiment. Let's set the traps and keep sin prevalent. Read. They say, who shall see them? They say, what? Who shall see them? That's what they say. Who shall see them? I'm going to tell you real quick. Right now, here's proof of it, right? Because right now with uh, Kanye West, they're taking him off of everything, right? We see what's going on. Have y'all seen one of the one person that's behind that? You understand what I'm saying? 
Have you have we seen one person that's that's gonna say yes? It was us, and, or it was me who took him off this or this or that. We have no clue who it is. Think about what I'm saying. Read it again. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Uh -huh. They commune of laying snares privily. Uh -huh. They say, who shall see them? So we'll say, well, we know it's the, the fake Jews. Okay, who? Who it? You don't know. They'll be in the room with Kanye and shake his hand and be the one who fired him. That's how they are. Keep reading. They search out iniquity. They do what? They search out iniquity. That's why I started in Judith 5. Because they know from the history, if we can get them in sin, if we can keep them there, we got them. Read. They search out iniquity. They accomplish a diligent search. A diligent search. What can we do to get them in sin? Watch this. Keep reading. Both the inward thoughts of every one of them and the heart is deep. It says the inward thought. That means... It says the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. That literally means that they have counseled and counseled and thought and planned how to keep these niggas down. That's what they call us. How to keep them down. How can we destroy them? They have thought deeply on that. We ain't talking about it like, like us. We might think we plan for a year or two. No, no, no. They've planned. And the Willie Lynch letter later on in the class is going to prove what I'm saying. They set things in motion and go, if we do it exactly this way, we could keep them down for hundreds of years. That's what they do. They search out sin. This, If we can keep them in sin, the Lord ain't going to deal with them on no level. Watch this. Drop that. Give me Psalms 83. Real quick. Psalms 83. Again, I'm just setting the foundation before we get into the madness. <laughs> it's, coming. it's coming. Don't worry. Give me Psalms 83, starting verse 2. Psalms 83, verse 2. Read. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Thine enemies make a tumult. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So those that hate you have become prideful. Why? Because the Israelites are destroyed today. I just watched a, 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 a street teaching of Deacon Ithon talking to Amalek. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a two-part thing, you know, um, on the IUIC Philadelphia channel. Check it out. Deacon was going into the scriptures, and this prideful demon was like, no, I, it's been my family, it's me. It ain't talking about you, because why? I'm in the land right now. My people are in the land. So Deacon goes to the scriptures and show there's the reason why you're there. But guess what? It doesn't matter to them. It doesn't matter. I'm there. I'm, I'm the chosen. It's not you niggas. Watch, watch the street teaching. All right, go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel. They did what? They have taken crafty counsel. That goes right back to what we read in Judith 5. You don't think they knew that? Let's keep them in sin. Let's, let's make sure we destroy them. Let's do the Balfour Declaration. Let's fight uh, and put, those, put our people in that land and say that we're them. Why? Because everything we've tried before. I remember Deacon Abiel was talking about this. Everything they've tried before failed. Right? They burned down. Uh, they burnt Babylon, burned down uh, Jerusalem, burned it down, burned everything down. What happened? We got everything back through uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, and all them, right? What happened? They destroyed it. They burned everything down. The Lord put the spirit on Ezra to, uh, Ezra to write everything again, right? So it's like every time we try to destroy the Bible, they just get it back. The Lord put the words back on, on the prophet. He give them back to the people. They come right back. So this is what we can do. Let's put ourselves there as opposed to just destroying it. Let's say we're those people. Let's say it's us, so they have no connection to their lineage and to their heritage. Right? Keep reading. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people Read. and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who is the hidden ones, brothers? Us. How? Because before we came into the truth, we thought we were who? African Americans, uh, Hispanics. That's what we thought. So you're the hidden one. Read. They have said, come and let us Cut them off from being a nation. Let's cut them off from being a nation. How? Let's get them in sin. Because we know the Lord ain't going to deal with them if they're in sin. We read that in the history. Let's cut them off. Let's put ourselves in the Bible. Let's, make, let's say it's us. Let's, we're the people in the land. Not realizing that the Lord, the, mo, the most high God is a mastermind. Think about it. They did all, those, all of those things, and they're so prideful, they thought it was their idea. Come to find out, when we come back to the scriptures and understand who we are, it's written thousands of years ago that they were going to do it. 
So when we see them in the land, and there's an Arab right next to them, wait a second. In Ezekiel, it said that the land would be parted. Wait a second. It said that they would sell us, that the, the Arabs and the Africans would sell us to the Grecians. They, the pride wouldn't let them see that. Everything they did, we go, we up today, us, we can go to the Bible that was, this was written thousands of years ago. All this, this is just the book of our records, right? They call it, or the book of the law is what it's called, uh, what we called it back then. This is just, they, they, the Lord made sure that we had it for today. But understand, it's been here forever. And everything that was written has always been written. So everything that they did in their pride, they thought it was their idea. They thought it was something great that they did. No, the Lord made sure that y'all did all of that. So when we wake up, we'll go, oh, it's us. Because if not, we would still be hidden right now. Wouldn't we still believe that it's them and not us if this wasn't already written? So everything plays out the way the Lord wants. Now, uh, where we at? Read verse 5. Verse 5. How did you finish verse 4? Uh, no, sir. All right, read it. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And guess what? It worked. It worked for a short period of time. We, th we thought we was niggas. Right? Keep reading verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against So, them. think about what I'm saying. These other nations, when you read down, it's going to go into the other nations. All the nations who are confederate against us. But I wanted to go here to show you the crafty council. That's why, remember, the title of the class is Overt Sexualization. There's a reason why these things are being pushed today. And that's part of that crafty council as well. If I can disconnect you from who you are, they're thinking, I can stay in rulership for as long as I need to. Watch this. Give me 1 Maccabees 1, verse 41. Here's the flip side to it, though, right? Because most of our people understand this. A lot of our people know this is not normal to, to be seeing what we're seeing on TV and the way our women act. But watch this. 1 Maccabees 1, 41. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Watch this. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom. Uh-huh. That all should be one people. That all should be one people. What that sound like today? Sound like America, doesn't it? Sound like, uh, sound like democracy, right? Read. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So the heathen un who understood if we take the commandments from them, we can destroy them. They say, yo, I agree with that. We all be one nation. Read. But here's the point. Out of, out of everything we just read with Psalms 83, with Psalms 64, Watch this. Read. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Wait a second. A lot of the Israelites agree to the oppression. A lot of Israelites agree to the madness. Why do you think when you go in, just for you brothers that go out into the streets and teach, for y'all that go out and teach, how many times have you read the Bible and showed proof that who we are, we got to keep God's commandments, what our people still say? I don't give a damn. I'm still ain't. I, I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna smoke weed. I'm still gonna do what I wanted. I'm still gonna get this money. I'm still gonna go out into the world and, and, and knock off these women. They're consenting to Esau's religion. It's still the same today. And guess what? We read all of that about how we destroyed just to find out that our people are gonna agree to it too. So don't think, but because we'll go, well, it's just a white man fault. No, that's why I went here to show you. A lot of our people agree to it, and you're going to see it throughout this class in the videos and articles that we bring out. You'll see. Read that again. 43. 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion uh -huh. and sacrificed unto idols uh -huh. and profaned the Sabbath. Wait a second. Are we not doing that right now? And we agree to it. We go to a pastor and say, according to Exodus 20 and 8, you got to keep the Sabbath. That's your interpretation of it. That ain't what I, my God, I can celebrate any day I want. Cat, um, we, when we did the church blitz, uh -huh. and these men can attest to it, uh -huh. this church was having a birthday bash for the pastor. Cat, the front lawn had, in big letters, I ain't talking about like little, little letters, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about big standing letters, <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, bishop, whatever his name was, on the front lawn, the front door Balloons everywhere. And this is Jake, ain't it? Jake, yeah. Listen, we was watching the stream live. You men can attest to this. We was watching the stream live. They had 
Uh, they had the regular uh, offering that they do, but they also had the birthday offering for him. Uh, <laughs> and they all, they had a, a thing, a box, and they was putting money, envelopes, and all kind of stuff for him. Wow. So we can send it, think about that, we can send it to their religion. We left the laws of God to do what they do. So, yes, Esau has did a diligent search, and as soon as they introduced sin to us, I'm showing you that Israel ran to it. We consent to it. Give me uh, Ezekiel 16. It's a little reading, so I want you to read fast. Start in verse 9. Ezekiel 16, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Then washed I, excuse me, then washed I thee with water. Uh-huh. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. Uh-huh. So this is talking about the Most High dealing with Israel. Give me, hold this, give me Jeremiah 6 and 2 real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Jeremiah 6 and 2. So you, Because you might wonder, why is he speaking about Israel as a woman? Let me show you. Jeremiah 6 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. Read. I have likened the daughters of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. All right. So he likened us to a woman. Let's go back. Ezekiel 16. But I want you to... So we know he's talking about Israel in Ezekiel 16. But I want you to think about the women of today. All right? Keep, keep in mind what I'm saying. Rem- He's speaking about Israel, but think about our women today. Read. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 9. Read. Then wash I thee with water. Uh Uh-huh. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. Uh Uh-huh. And I anointed thee with oil. Watch this. I clothed thee also with broidered works. Uh Uh-huh. And shod thee with badgered skin. Uh Uh-huh. And girded thee about with fine linen. Uh Uh-huh. And I covered thee with silk. So the Lord took care of us. He brought brought us to being a nation, is what he's saying. I took care of you. I put you in silk. I put you in the best best clothing. Read. I decked thee also with ornaments. I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. Uh Uh-huh. And I put a jewel on thy forehead Uh and earrings in thy ears and a beautiful crown upon thy head. So he's saying, I made you beautiful. I made you, Israel, I made you beautiful because you're dealing with the most high. So he's saying, because you're dealing with me, I'm, I took care of you, is what he's saying. Read. Thus was, thus was thou decked with gold and silver, uh-huh. and thy raiment was fine linen and silk and broidered works. Uh-huh. Thou did eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou waxed exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper in a kingdom. Into a kingdom. When you read about Solomon and all, you'll see how, how decked out everything was. Go back and read that history to see. But think about our women today as well. Watch this. Keep reading. And thy renown went forth among the heathens for thy beauty. For thy beauty. Just so y'all know, Israelite women are the best women on the planet. They're the most beautiful women on the planet. Period. Read. For it was perfect through my comeliness. Through my comeliness because I made you like that. Read. Which I have put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Read. But thou distrust in thine own beauty. But they what? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. You trusted in your own beauty, not the Lord's. Read. And play is the harlot. And do what? Play is the harlot. And plays the harlot. Plays the whole. Read. Because of thy renown. Because you are known. You're known for your beauty, so you played the whole. Bam. Read. And pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passes by. Uh-huh. His it was. You pour out your, so you jump into anything. You So you're trying to. With all fornications, you with it. Whatever these nations are doing, you with it. Did we not just read that? What was you going to say? No, uh, uh, I was reading right here. This is the biblical definition, she for the streets. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone that passed by. Everyone that passed by. It's gonna get, watch this, read. And of thy, and of thy garments thou didst take, uh-huh. and deck thy high places with diverse thy colors. Thy high places is talking about us going to those groves and going making those altars and... Uh, 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 worshiping those idols is what that's talking about. High places. All right, read. And play is the harlot thereupon. Uh huh. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Read. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, uh-huh. which I have given thee, and made it to thyself an image of a man. Uh, made to thyself images of, ma- of men, and did commit whoredom with them. Followed after their ways. So, I, like I said, I'm showing you. That Israel, we love those things. Yes, Esau set that up to destroy us, and it's a lot of our people who love it, who played, who who 
would rather be with Esau than the most high God. God says, I decked you out. I took care of you. But the first thing you did was took what I gave you and went straight to them. Ain't that what our women doing today? And then when you read in Hosea uh, chapter 1, you see why the Lord, he want, the Lord wanted Hosea to, I'll just, I, don't, I wouldn't got time. Hose, the Lord wanted Hosea to understand what it was like or how the most high felt dealing with Israel. So he made Hosea marry a hoe. He had to marry a harlot. So when you read that, you'd be like, why would he tell him to marry a woman of harlot, of, of, of you know, harlot? Because he wanted him to see exactly how Israel is when it comes to him. So when you see these women today, you see what's going on. They agree to it. They love it. East, they, they know it's destroying our people, but they still with it. Okay, keep reading. Where we at? Verse 18. Read. And took his diabrotic garments and covered them, and thou hast set my oil and my incense before them. You see that? You're going before them. You're going before your idols. You're going before these other nations. Read. My meat also, which I gave thee, uh -huh. fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor, and, and thus it was, saith the Lord. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me. Uh -huh. And these hast thou sacrificed unto, unto them to be a, a devoured. To be devoured. Brothers, what's this speaking about? Go ahead, Brother Athenia. Uh, Abortion. Read down to verse 21. Oh, no. Read, yeah, keep reading. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? Is this a small matter, Read That thou hast slain my children uh -huh. and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. Stop. Now, hold that. Go to the article, Demographics of Abortion in America. Because it's talk. remember, he's talking about Israel, but... I want you to put it in the sense of not only just today uh, uh, of us as a people, but our women. Just, just think about a, a, our, that sister today who was in wickedness. Huh. Read that, Jeremiah. The demographics of abortion in America. Watch this. Read. Which women in America get an abortion? Uh -huh. The answer is more complicated than it is often portrayed in the media or in online discussion. The women are indeed likely to be low income. Ah, who's low income? It's us. All right but are also likely to be educated. Wait a second. Them sisters that say, I got a degree. Most of the time, they the ones with the abortion. Damn. We're going to see. Keep going. And in graduate school. And in graduate school. Getting knocked up in graduate school and the, the, uh, the aborting the baby. Hmm. Okay. They are unmarried, but are also mothers. So they're saying, not only are they graduates and they smart, they already have kids. Most of them who are, most of the women who have abortions already have kids. Hmm. Keep going. They are also likely to have already had an abortion. And to, Read that last line. They are also likely to have already had an abortion. Watch this. Read. And to self-identify as Christian. Wow. Self-identify as a Christian. What are we just reading? Go down. I want you to read the, uh, uh, just scroll down. Watch that part. You got to say it in the mic, man. That, that first paragraph shows all programming. Yes. They're educated. Yep. They're, um, they are, every, everything, everything they, they, they listed on there shows that that woman was being programmed from, from all the way. All from the, way the jump. So she's, she's educated. She's got a college education. She's already had an abortion before, and she's a Christian. And guess what? And she's she loves programmed it. the whole time. And she loves it. You, we give her a scripture mm -hmm. to say that God said don't do it. She'll damn near fight you. Read that. Women of color. Women of color have the most abortions. Read it again. Women of color have the most abortions. Read that. Among the 30 areas that reported race by ethnicity data for 2019, uh -huh. non-Hispanic white women and non-Hispanic black women accounted for the largest percentages of all abortions. Uh -huh. 33.4. So you'll read it and be like, dang, so white people, are, just, just, just watch. 33.4% and 38.4% uh, respectively. <laughs> Brain crashed. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Hispanic women and non-Hispanic women in the other race category accounted for smaller percentages, 21% and 7.2% respectively. Watch this. Non-Hispanic white women had the lowest abortion rate, 6.6 .6 .6 abortions per 1,000 women. You see that? So it says, so for, it says what? 6.6 .6 abortions per 
1,000 women. Read. And ratio 117 abortions per 1,000 live births. Watch this. And non Hispanic black women had the highest abortion rate 23.8 abortions per 1,000 women. Per, that's insane, y'all. That's insane. 23 per 1,000 women. Watch this. And ratio 386 abortions per 1,000 live births. Per li 386 abortions per 1,000 live births. Killing our kids at an astronomical rate. Keep reading. Hold on. Scroll down. Hold on. Scroll down. Scroll down. I want you to read this. Almost half. Almost half had more than one abortion. Among the 44 areas that reported a number of previous in Reduced abortions for 2019, uh -huh. the majority of women, 58.2%, had previously had no abortions. Mm, watch this. 23.8% had previously had one abortion. 10.5% uh -huh. had previously had two abortions. And 7.5% had previously had three or more abortions. 7.5% of them had three or more abortions. Y'all got to understand, our women are crazy out here. Keep reading. Altogether, 41.8% of women who had an abortion in 2019 had previously had at least one abortion. Almost half. <laughs> I hope that's what it said. At least one before they got this one in 2019. Damn. Keep, hold on. I want to get the educated. Read that. Most women who... This is the first paragraph. Yes, sir. Most women who abort are educated. Read that again. Most women who abort are educated. So when, like you said, Aaron, with the programming, when we hear that woman say, "I'm independent, I'm strong, I got six degrees," chances are she got a, she had an abortion. Chances are she killed her her kid. Chances are she's a murderer. But you're independent, though. Okay. And her own career comes before her family. Her right. career comes before her everything. You, right. You'll kill your kid for your career. Read that. Fewer than one in ten women, nine percent who had an abortion in 2014 of abortion patients aged 20 or older had less than a high school degree. So only 9% of those for the 20 and up had, uh, had a high school degree. Watch this. While the overwhelming majority, 91%, had graduated from high school, Read. more than one in five had a college degree. Damn! So, Cap, so, Cap it's not these quote-unquote Dumb sisters no. that are in the projects, no. hanging around. It's no, actually people that got a tuition and, and, and going degrees. and trying to get degrees and yes. all this stuff that is committing it at a percentage of 90%. Yes. Absolutely. 91%. Absolutely. Wow. Watch this. Read. According to the Gutmaker Institute. Go to, go to the, next, uh, the next paragraph right there. Almost one. Almost one in four, 24% of women who had an abortion in 2014 were currently attending school. So they're in school while they're killing these kids. Especially those college sisters. Let me tell you something. Colleges, I was talking to, I was talking to Captain REA and I think it was Captain, I forgot what other captain it was, this past Sabbath. And I was like, yo, it, it's, it's insane how when we're sending our daughters off to college, it's going to be best for them to actually stay home. And go to like go to a campus for the classes and bring their butt right back home. Why? Because if they stay on, I went to college. Listen, I was staying on campus. I had an apartment through the school. Like that, I didn't. I didn't have no job, but I had an apartment. What y'all think I was doing at the apartment? That's what I'm saying. So to send your daughter off, you play. Listen. What? And them dorm rooms, too? You don't have your parents there no more. You don't have a curfew anymore. You can go anywhere you want. Man, please. Hey, they say they say that uh, colleges and the military are like the biggest yes. courthouses. Yes. In yes. The, the military is just as bad, too, from what I hear. Yep. Scroll down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right here. Right here. And then this will be the last one. And see if we can find that. Somebody find that article of the, the murder... Uh, on her mind, sister that was twerking outside the abortion clinic. Cause we talking about overt sexualization. Don't we ain't forgot about that? Watch this. Most women who abort identify as Christian. They identify as Christian. Three. More than one in three women surveyed, thirty eight percent did not identify with any religion. Uh huh. About one in four identify as Roman Catholic. 
Uh oh. About 17% identify as mainline Protestant, while 13% identified as evangelical Protestant. Uh huh. Altogether, 54 of women who had an abortion identify with a Christian tradition. You see that? 54%, I think it's percent. 54% of women who had an abortion identify with a Christian tradition. They, they are, they'll say they believe in Christ. This is insane. I believe in the Bible. I believe in doing all these things, but you're aborting at the highest rate. You're committing murder at the highest rate. Y'all find the video real quick? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, somebody talk. Uh, bring that bring that article back up. Uh, that last there was a piece right there. So this the the bottom part right. It says as Christians grapple with this information, some of it's surprising. One of the ways we can respond is by praying for wisdom in how to use it to care for women, proclaim forgiveness and redemption through Christ, and plead for the preborn girls and boys to be given a chance at life. How are they going to be given a chance at life when they kill them? When they're killing them every time. It's, that's the hypocrisy and the, and the madness of it. Watch this. All right, so hold on. Turn this up. Uh, this is, I don't know this is the name. Um, I don't care, really. But rap, rapper twerks at Planned Parenthood. Remember, overt sexualization. I want you sisters to understand something. Right now, I know... That's you sisters online and your sisters here that's in the truth. You're disgusted when you see this. In the world, you wouldn't have minded. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you would have been like, whatever, do your thing. You might have been the one twerking on here. I, I'm, uh, what, am I saying something crazy? It's facts. Were we not crazy in the world? Okay. Watch this. Ridiculous. Tell me she got murder on her mind, aborting her children, aborting her nation. What we just read in Ezekiel 16. Go ahead. Say what you're gonna say. I, I'm just like shocked how far we have fallen. Like when I, we She's read smiling. Deuteronomy 76, we got chosen people, right? We have fallen so far, man. This is crazy. Yeah. What other nation is doing this? No, Ain't no other nations doing no. this, man. This is just Israel, man. This is crazy, man. She got murder on her mind, making a, and she's dancing and twerking, having a great time. Other nations banned this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Other nations banned this. That's a fact. Matter of fact, China, all of they banning hip hop. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. They, I seen TikTok has apparently two different versions. Yes. There's sir. a tick yeah. Jeremiah. You can back that up. Yes. Sir. There's a TikTok sir. that's in China. Then there's because they supposedly made it. Uh -huh. Then there's a TikTok that's in the United States. They had a split screen and they showed the TikTok in China and the TikTok here. It's the TikTok in China shows educational stuff, how to build and how to all educational stuff. The TikTok over here is this working in front of uh, an abortion clinic. I got murder on my mind. Go back to the video. Let's finish it. I wish I would read the words that she put that they put up. Complete destruction. Whoa. Complete destruction. Damn, man. Our women, our women used to used to cry to the Lord to have children. Right. Yes. To read right. about our yes. foremothers. Used right. to, that was that, that was the all biggest I, honor. That was the biggest that, that thank you. That was the biggest honor the sisters ever wanted. Not no more. Not no more. And then give them to the service of the Lord. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and then give them to the Lord. Right. Yeah. Now yeah. she don't what? She don't care. And guess you know, but but the the thing about it is, those sisters, uh, it's not you older sisters that's gonna see this and want to do it. It's your daughters. It's the young daughters. That the beat catchy is good. She got the money to the ear. She's doing all the stuff that she see other women do. What they're doing is Esau 
Why is this popular? That's being pushed. Like you said earlier, you don't see no other nations doing that. Mm-hmm. Why ain't Chinese women doing that? Why ain't white women doing that? She set that whole thing up. It'd be, be shoes thrown at. It'd be <laughs> that would never happen. Look, the Arab woman ain't finna do that. No, no, she they be, probably hang her. She be dead. Oh. Arab you know woman, she be saying? dead. So what I'm saying is, who the people who own TikTok, they won't allow it for their people. Well, why the hell is it allowed for ours? And guess what? Our people see that, share it, and love it. We love it. Mm. It's a trap by Esau, and we're dancing in the trap that they created for us. We're celebrating it. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel started verse 22. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 22. Sheesh. And in all thy abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. Uh-huh. When thou wast naked and bare and was pollute, polluted in thy blood. Yeah, when you said when, when I actually took care of you, you forgot that. You forgot that I came and made you a great nation, a kingdom. Y'all had the kingdom. Read. And it came to pass, after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, say of the Lord God, Uh that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place and has made thee a high place in every street. Everywhere you you, you, uh, committing idolatry. That's what he's saying. You following out the every way of the nations. You're doing everything that they're doing, serving their gods. That's what you're doing. Read. Thou hast built thy place at every head of the way, and has made thy beauty to be abhorred. Uh huh. And, and has made op- your beauty to be abhorred. And what we just seen. Right. right. Read. And has opened thy feet to everyone that passes by. What y'all think that means? She is having sex with everybody. This sister right here just made a song about doing it, and then go killing the baby right after. She ain't no ain't no nigga cuffing me. That's unprotected sex. So she don't care about no ST, she don't care about nothing. If I get a baby, that baby's dead. <sighs> Dang. Read. And multiply thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptian, thy neighbor. Uh-huh. Great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms. Now watch this. Just I'm gonna jump because I don't want to uh, I don't want to take up too much time. Jump to verse 38. Verse 38. And I will judge thee as women that break that break wet life. And shed blood or judge. He's going to judge us for that. He's judging Israel for that. That's why it's getting worse and worse. Because our people refuse to keep the commandments. They want to follow exactly what Esau taught them. Read. And I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. Read. And I will also give thee into their hands. He said, I'm going to give you to the other nations. You in their hands now. So everything that they do, you're going to be subject to it. Look what we see. Read. And they shall throw down thine eminent place uh-huh. and shall break down thine high places. Uh-huh. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes uh-huh. and shall take thine fair jewels and leave thee naked what and happened? bare. Did Babylon not come do that? Did it not happen again in 70 AD? Did we not go, get brought over here on slave ships? Everything that the Lord said, it happened because we wanted to do what the nation's doing. Even though we know it's a trap. Keep reading. Read out of verse 40. Verse 40. They shall also bring up a company against thee. Uh-huh. They shall stone thee with stones uh-huh. and thrust thee through with their they sword. They destroy you. That's exactly what happened. And that's what's happening right now. She talking about murder on her mind. And we'll do an interview, be smiling, happy as hell. And then kill. I guarantee you she's had way more than two, three abortions. That's just a problem to have about nine or ten. She, she's a serial killer. Hey, Kel, she, um, she knows that thou shalt not kill also. She yeah. Said, I got murder on my mind. But listen, she, she, she probably grew up in a Christian church. It just said 54% of them are Christians. So she was in the church. Grandma and them singing everything. They might not have the truth, but they know better still. Man, look. Yeah, they know better. They know, exactly they know exactly what's They know it's life. They know exactly. They're not confused, they're not confused like Esau is. That, that's a fact. I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up. Yeah, because to say, I get you, to say murder on your mind, you know for a fact what you're doing. Get the definition of overt. O-V-E-R-T. O-V-E-R-T. Done or shown openly. Done or shown openly. Plainly or readily apparent. Plainly or readily apparent. Read. Not secret or hidden. Not secret or hidden. 
they're showing you that they're trying to destroy you. That's the overtness of it. It's, right, it's plain to see, unconcealed, plain, clear, plainly seen. Hit the down arrow. Apparent, unmistakable, obvious, noticeable, overt. Now, type in Google. Google the word uh, sexualization. Don't put sexualization definition. Just put sexualization. S, yeah. Yep, the first one. Yep, that's exactly it right there. Read that. Sexualization was defined by the task force as occurring when a person's value comes only from her or his sexual appeal or behavior. You see that? Where your value is only in your sexual appeal or your behavior. Is that not Instagram? Is that not Twitter? Is that not Facebook? Where your value is only based in how sexy you are. Overt sexualization. Read. To the exclusion of other characteristics. So to the exclusion of you being a righteous sister, of you trying to be uh, having morals, those things are excluded, and it's about your sexual appeal and behavior. Read. And when a person is sexually objectified, uh -huh. example, made into a thing for another's sexual use. You see that? Made into a thing for another's sexual use. They have succeeded in overtly sexualizing our entire nation. All the stuff that you see is our people. All of it. Watch this. Click on the, uh, the yep, that, that, uh, that link right there. Let me see. I want you to read just the first couple paragraphs. All right. Uh, read the title first. Sexualization of girls is linked to common mental health problems. Read that again. Sexualization of girls is linked to common me mental health problems. So Esau knows if we can over overtly sexualize them, it's going to lead to what? Low self-esteem. It's going to lead to depression. It's going to lead to you wanting to be a, 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 a independent. All those things is going to come from that over overt sexualization. Read. In girls and women. Uh -huh. Eating disorders. Eating disorders. So we got... Think of, yeah, yeah, you know, some who want to be uh, the best shape of their life, who don't want to be big or whatever, or on the flip side, they want to eat to get bigger and get BBLs and all this other stuff that we're seeing. So it's the images that you're seeing on Instagram and on Twitter, on social media, that's making our women go, oh, you know what, I have to be like that. I'm not good enough as I am. That's what's happening. Read. Low self-esteem uh -huh. and depression. So you get eating disorders, low self-esteem, depression. Read, go to the first paragraph. A report. A report of the American Psycho... Am I saying that? Physiological? No, psychological. Psy psychological Association released today found evidence that the proliferation of sexualized images of girls and young women in advertising, merchandising, and media is harmful to girls' self-image and healthy development. So, if it's in advertising, merchandising, and media, does that not doesn't that mean that it was set up that way? Right. Does that not mean that it was intentional? That's the overt sexualization. They set those things up on purpose: advertising, merchandising, and media. You can't you can't watch a commercial now without it being some type of sex in it. You got a, a slogan in advertising: "Sex sells." That's it. Sex, yep. you're absolutely right. Sex sales. So they know that. And guess who they use for that? Our women. We're the ones being used, especially these rap sisters. Watch this. Is that it? Uh, read that. Read, read that second paragraph. To complete the report, the APA Task Force on the Sexualization of Girls studied published research on the content and effects of virtually every form of media. Of every form of media. Read. Including television. Music videos, music lyrics, uh -oh. magazines, movies, video games, and the internet. They also examined recent advertising campaigns and merchandising of products aimed towards scroll girls. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Right there. Examples of the sexualization of girls in all forms of media, uh -huh. including visual media and other forms of media such as music, Lyrics abound, uh -huh. and according to the report, have lightly increased in number as new media have been created and access to media has become omni omnipresent. Meaning everywhere. Everybody got their phone, right? 
So any app, everything that you go to is going to be, you're going to see the advertising of our women being sexualized. That's what they're saying. Read. The influence and attitudes of parents, siblings, and friends can also add to the pressures of sexualization. I like that they said that because that's a fact. The influence and attitudes of parents. I remember my rib told me a story. This was, you know, when we first come into the truth. And and she rem- she was telling me how, you know, she all praise that she was ex- excited and happy to wear a dress. And I remember her telling me that her mother used to always tell her, you have really good legs, you should show them off. Her mom, her, it says the influence and attitudes of parents, siblings, and friends can can also add to the pressures of sexualization. Shake what your mama gave you. Is that not what we're seeing? The parents are the ones who had a... Matter of fact, we just was at the parade this past Sabbath. Guess what? Most of the the groups were ages 8 to 15, 16. You know how many of them... I can only imagine how many sexual offenders was actually there. Knowing that it's going to be young girls there. And they didn't, they didn't have on dresses. No. And the parents are cheering them on, taking pictures, posting it on Facebook. Go to the video, uh, Curl Talk, the hypersexualization of black women. And we're going to start at, it should be in there, but I don't know if I put it. Uh, start at 1 minute and 24 seconds. Oh, uh, this is... Uh, a talk show, or a, uh, I guess a segment of these sisters talking about our women being sexualized in music. So we're going to play from 1 minute, 24 seconds, to 5 minutes and 10 seconds. I want you to see the whole thing they're talking about. Uh, hit play. I see that a lot in rap Turn music. Turn it up. Yeah, from, the, from a lot of male rappers, but even like female rappers. Uh, for example, Megan Thee Stallion is one of my favorite artists, and body, she, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. <laughs> <laughs> she's effer- at, like very hypersexual, and I love it because it's. I think it's her being that fourteen-year-old who is also catcalled, who is also accosted. Her whole name is because of one encounter, and she was. I think she said she was thirteen, and some random guy was like, "You're a stallion. You're this. You're that." And she went home, and the crying to her parents, like, what does this mean? Mm-hmm. And they tried to turn it into a positive thing, but Stop. I think at the time... Her was- parents said, oh, you're a stallion? They, tur- they tried to turn it into a positive thing, is what she's saying. Did we not just read that in the uh, article that we was reading? 13 years old. Talking about she was cat called. She's talking about, I love it. You heard when they said her name, they said, yes, yeah, and all that crap they be saying. They love that stuff, man. That is literally pedophilia. The- uh, Absolutely. I, I, was, I was just thinking the same thing. Like, the parents didn't go, who the hell said <laughs> yeah. what? We're going to find him. What the hell are you talking about? Facts. Turned it, they turned it into a positive thing? Yes, it's a what? positive. The parents did. How you turn pedophilia into something positive? You a stallion, girl. Ain't that a male horse? That is, yes, a, male, is a male that's horse. That's a male horse. So yes. what are we talking about? He didn't even... He didn't have, like, his hell. Like, she ain't even changed the name. It's a 13-year-old girl. And pretty much you're saying she got a donkey butt. Right. Right. Wow. And she stuck with it. She stuck with it. Today. Like, famous for that name. Anyway, hit play. Wasn't because she's 13. She didn't know. But I think her, her purpose is to have women tap into that sexuality, not because they are sexual, but just because now it's our power now. Stop. 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 She said it's our power now, not the male's power. Our women are bad-ish insane. It's our power now. How is looking like a hoe your power? What are we talking about? These sisters are, listen to me, y'all. These sisters have went insane. Hit play, hit play, hit play. Males power. They can't tell you who you are because you're going to tell them who you are. That sort of thing. So I think I think it's very, like you said, it's very hard to draw a boundary. Well, Stop. I think also and I guarantee you all them single. Ain't nobody. I ain't no way. I, it's, nobody should be with these sisters. Nobody. I just want to deal with this real quick. I wasn't going to. Give me 1 Corinthians 7. I have to. Give me 4. Because she said that the one they taking back their power is not the man's power anymore. Okay. When we talk about your wife's body and you know, oh, let's see. 
First Corinthians chapter seven and verse four. Read. The wife has not power of her own body, but the husband. So what the hell is she talking about? The scripture just said the wife has no power over her own body, but her husband. Yeah, she had a black. Yeah, that's, that's the, the famous black highlighter. She don't even know that's in the Bible. I guarantee it. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Anyway, hit play. I just want to read just that part. Yeah, with Meg the Stallion, right? It's like, yes, women are sexual beings, right? But, like, mm -hmm. we don't need to be hypersexualized, you know, mm -hmm. as, as children. And even, you know, growing into adulthood, like, our sexual the sexuality is for ourselves. Like, our pleasure is for ourselves. And I think that's an important message. I agree. Like, I think it's definitely up to us to be able to choose when, when we want to be sexual or when we want to have our bodies seen. But oh, yeah. when you're married... What the hell are you talking about? Go ahead. Why are they, why are they basing life decisions on entertainment? That's 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 what we believe in. That's what we believe. <laughs> like, you gotta understand. Maybe uh, an entertainer. Yes. She dresses like that and raps like that because she getting paid to do that. That's because and they're our, taking it like it's something real. Our people believe that these entertain these musicians, they are they believe that those are our leaders. Why do you think Kanye West talking the way he's talking? And, I, and he's front page news for black people. Think about what I'm saying. He's front page news for black people. When do you hear about Elon Musk talking crazy like this? Mm -mm. When do you hear about uh, the, any other other Chinese, the Chinese president going, you don't hear that stuff because they don't put the, the, the jester as the leader. We do that. We put the buffoon and the clown. Kanye shouldn't even be speaking for black people, to be honest. Just keep making your songs. Do what you're going to do, but you don't speak for us. But we allow him, because he said he made, he's a billionaire. Now that means that he can speak for us? If he loved his people so much, why he didn't marry a Jake sister? Oh, damn. That's, that should have been a bomb right procreate, there. Bro. Procreate with a sister. Facts. This dude said he's Moses. Oh, he said that? He's, yes. He's, in his latest interview, he said, I'm Moses for my people. You know I got to get it. Hold it. Give me How Hebrews 11, 24 real quick. Say what you're going to say. How can you, again, how can you be Moses and you married, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> these, listen, it's like like uh, Aaron just said, how? How can you, these are entertainers. These are jesters. And we following them like what they're saying is, is, is biblical. Read that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused it. Is he re didn't he have a hat that said "Make America Great Again"? Mm -hmm. Did he not have? Did he not have "White Lives Matter" on? Like, sure did. Would Moses have done that? No, sir. They said he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Read, mm -hmm. choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Who? When is he? You think he's gonna give six? Seven, how many billions he got? You think he's gonna give it up to go sit and and, and help his people? Hell no. Hell no. In the interview, the first thing he was saying was, I'm the richest black man ever in the history of America, or whatever he was. He was like, you think he's going to give that up? Don't be, please don't be confused and think that he's going to do all this great. No, he still do Sunday service. He still do all the stuff that, that Christians do. Talk about he Moses. No, nigga, you crazy. Go ahead, keep reading. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So he said, I'd rather suffer affliction with my people than to be an included in the system on any level. Read. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. You see that? Understanding that. You think Kanye West, under, he ain't no damn Moses. He a nigga that can make good music. And it ain't, and it's actually evil music. To be honest with you, finish that off. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. The reward of Christ. Not the money. Not, not the, the, the treasures in Egypt. Hit play on the video. It shouldn't be the man's choice mm -hmm. to decide, okay, I see her walking on the street minding her business. Let me catcall her or let me tell her something about her body that she probably already knows. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should how, be something how, that. <laughs> how is he? You can't <laughs> do that if you're dressed modestly. It, Proverbs 7 and 10. Get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's very simple. You walk down the street as a hoe, you're going to get caught. Hey, ho, what are you doing? You How are you doing? Where you at? What are we talking about? You dress like one. 
You dress literally like how prostitutes dress, and the man can't say nothing. Yeah, she's a, she's probably a college graduate, too. I, yeah, Very yeah. intelligent. She's probably had a couple of abortions, too, according to the statistics. If you dress like one, you walk like one. If it walk like a duck, if it quack like a duck. Must be a duck. Damn it. No, it's a dog. It's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, that's a dog. That's not a duck. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, if I see somebody with scrubs on and a white coat, I'm saying that's a doctor right there. Right. With, I'm not gonna say, "Hey ho," <laughs> like that's not okay. <laughs> like you're not gonna do that. You're gonna say what they dress like. I see a badge, a gun. Hey, police, uh, police officer, we need help over here. Hey ho. <laughs> hey ho. Like, no, who, who put does? your hands behind your back, sir. Like, right. <laughs> what are we talking about? Get that Proverbs seven and ten, man. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Read. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. With the, it, he knew it was a hoe by how she was dressed. He knew that was a hoe by how she was dressed. She had the attire or the clothing of a whore. A hoe. Hey, ho. Damn. That's crazy, man. Give me, uh, I thought you go. You, you go ahead, get it. Go ahead, get it. Ciroc 19, go ahead. They're, they're not even embarrassed by that no more. You can, no. You can say it now. Oh, yeah. They walk yeah, yeah, around saying it. Yeah, yeah. They, they call themselves a They call themselves a No, no problem. She just said that. I feel like you can dress however you want, and you shouldn't be catcalled. What are we talking about? So we supposed to just ignore the fact that you a hoe. It, 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 don't say I'm a hoe. Just I'm a nice, upstanding citizen. What? Hey, ho. What are you like, man? I'm sorry, y'all. This is crazy to me. This is how, like you said, it's how far we've fallen. Sirach 1929. Sirach chapter 19, verse 29. Read. A man may be known by his looks. Wait a second. What did God say? A man may be known by his look. Read. And one that has understanding by his countenance. By his countenance. By the way that they look, you can tell if that's a whore or a harlot. By how she is dressed. That's basic, fundamental, easy stuff. That's simple stuff. You see us on the street, and we have the purple shirt on with the black boots and the black pants. You're going to say, those are the Israelites over there. What are we talking about? You see me with fringes, you're going to say, he keeps the commandments. As soon as you see it, like, nobody... And it's only black women who do this. I hope you understand. It's only black women who go, I'm going to dress like a hoe, but you can't call me one. I'm going to be a hoe, you can't call me one. No. You don't find that suspicious. I got all these abortions. I ain't a murderer. You don't find that suspicious. Is, this is retarded, man. I'm sorry. I have to use that word. Damn. Let's go back. Anybody got something they want to say? You, want, you got no. something? You sure? No, if I do, my brain cells might cry. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Say what brings <laughs> <laughs> like. yeah. Go ahead. It's pointed out unless unless you, you feel comfortable with it. I don't think it's necessary all the time, if that makes sense. No. I remember didn't. when, specifically when, um, who was it, J-Lo and Ja Rule came out with I'm Real and watching that video and I'm like, I don't look like her. Or like watching other videos and like, I don't look like them. I, I can't do what they do. And like, I had no business doing what they were doing at that age. But I thought like that was... What it meant to be beautiful Stop. is like to be. We just looked at an article where it said overt, overt sexualization and what that does in the media and things like that, it lowers self-esteem. So this sister goes, I'm looking at nothing but light-skinned women on TV. They, all I'm seeing is them. So I, she said, I, I, I guess that's what it means to be beautiful is what she's saying. To look light-skinned like them. Mm -hmm. Read, I mean, play be like sexual in the in this way and I'm just like I, there's a lot that I didn't know that I didn't know but I think for me part of that like watching that is just like feeling like not really seeing myself in those spaces so part of that too was also not feeling like desired or like attractive Stop. depression that's what that's talking about a lot of our women have been through that before they came into the truth before you realize you was God chosen a lot of our women was like I don't measure up to that why you think it's a line? How many times we seen videos with sisters in line to get a BBL? Sisters are dying to get plastic surgery. Dying to get a certain look that they see on Instagram, not realizing there's filters, 
There's, uh, you know, all these different things that they put to make themselves look a certain kind of way. Those women don't look like that. They don't look like that. It's, oh, man. Go ahead. No, uh, I was trying to think of the ther- uh, term. It's called catfish. Catfish, catfish. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's what they call That's it. what it is. Yeah. But again, because it's pushed for our women, and it's so, it's pushed so strongly that even even though the other nations try to stay away from it, they're still starting to do what our women are doing. They're still trying to look like the black woman. All of them, which is good. Yeah, because she, from what she sees on TV, yep. she feels like she's not beautiful. Right. So then she goes out and flaunts, right, yep. what she has to get that attention. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's just, a, it's crazy. Yep. Man. Keep playing. We're going to go to five minutes and 10 seconds. And like all these things, especially when we talk about like complexion, right? Like a lot of them are like light skin. Just like, ah, that's also not me. Um, so it definitely like had an impact in how I viewed myself. Um, and like sort of how I navigated what it means to be like conventionally beautiful. And what does like your own beauty look like? If you're a woman and you don't show like you, that you're hypersexual or like that you own your sexuality, it's like you're not attractive then, then nobody wants you. Like, oh, she's like a prude. She mm-hmm. doesn't want to do anything sexual. She just wants to be like a square. But it's like, why do I have to like force myself to like act sexual or like show my sexuality when I don't want to? Like, that's something that's personal Pause to that me. Pause there real quick. What she's saying is that if she's dressed modestly, she won't get attention from men. That's not true. Uh, trust me on that. The, our women, they see other women do that, and they try to look like what that woman looks like. I'm not saying that. I, the, the difference is when she's modest, the brother doesn't treat her like a hoe. She's not getting the attention of an harlot. That's what she mean by she's not getting any, you know, nobody's talking. To, no, that's not what's happening. The brother actually has respect for you, so he's not saying, hey, ho. <laughs> that's not what he's doing. But that's the atten- she, she just revealed that. It's the attention that she wants. Because all these brothers in here married, that's married, had, their wife is modest. And they know that their wife is beautiful. So obviously what she's saying isn't true. The problem is our women are used to being treated like hoes. So if they don't get the attention like hoes, they feel like they're undesirable. Think about what I'm saying. It's because of the sexualization. They're, how do we know? Because most of our sisters, that were when they were in the world, when they got ready, they got dressed up, put their makeup on, and put their clothes on. What's the last thing they look at before they leave the house? Say it on the mic. Say it. Their butt. They know that. That's why they start laughing. Sisters start laughing. They know. In the world, right before they leave, Am I lying? Y'all know that's what it was. Hey, half the half the pictures in the world, there was they there was their face looking over their shoulder. Exactly. That's what's happening. And guess what? The young, the, the our babies in the world, I'm talking about in the world, they see that and they take those same pictures. They do the same Ezekiel 16, 44. As the mother is, so is the daughter. The same damn thing. Keep playing the video. And if I want to showcase that, then I will. But if I don't, that doesn't make me less than a woman, less right. than a, like, you know, that doesn't take away my femininity, if that makes sense Stop, stop, too. stop. You know what? Uh, another thing, too, what she's saying, because I'm telling you it's not what she's saying. What happens is they put a picture of their butt, they get a million likes. They put a picture with a dress on, they get six. And they can't, I'm telling you, because of social media, especially with these young, young women, they can't deal with that. I'm telling you, it gets to a point where it's like, you know what? I'm not getting the attention. Let me put another picture up like this. Let me put another picture up like this. Because when they put a regular one up, they're not getting no, no, all that because the men are trying to, or and the sisters too, trying to force them to, to, to show your body. It's about your, what it said in, uh, what was the first, uh, sexualization. Your sexual appeal and behavior. That's what's important. And our sisters are falling for that trap on social media. Right. Uh, that that social media thing just going just going off on the side because it's not by accident that uh, the like is a thumbs up because mm. we associate thumbs up with good job. It's not an accident that love is a heart. We associate that with love. 
right? It's no accident. Like all that is part of engineering. Damn, social in mind. Yeah. So it's your like mind. so every heart is the more. So the more hearts you get is the more love you was yeah. being shown. Yeah. And the more thumbs up means you're doing that much of a good yes. job. There's actually a book on it. Wow. Um, uh, on what the how they build those type of things, it sets off a trigger in your mind. That's why it's like that. So it's an entire book on that. So when they don't get that that attention, they get depressed and say, "I'm not desirable." Right. So, so she's saying, way. "I don't want to have to be sexual." You don't have to be, sister. sister. You just need to disconnect from social media. Open your Bible. How about you read the Bible sometimes? Go ahead, Aaron. I'm just saying that that means it's witchcraft. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, bro, you can access everything on this. What do you mean? That's not no, normal. The, the, the fact that it uh, takes over their mind like that. He said it, it, it was actually designed uh, the, yes. the heart to mean love. Yeah. The, uh, the thumbs up to mean that, that's, that's a good job. Mm-hmm. And then that, that, the, the heart meaning love to them means, oh, everybody loves me. So if I don't get any hearts, then they don't I, love me. Yeah. But that's not the real meaning of love. Yeah. So I need like, to show more body parts. Yeah, right. I need to show more ass. <laughs> She's like, I need to be show more ass. Or oh, I need to get a BBL. Maybe I get even more likes. Maybe I be known and I can. They nah. really love me. Yeah, that stuff is crazy. Hit play. Remember, five minutes. 10 yeah, seconds. and when I think about why feminism is important, it's because it's oh, about God. choice, right? Having that choice to be all body yaddy like Meg Thee Stallion, but also like. Wrapped up like NDRE, like you know, all like all can exist. So and, you know, it's not... So feminism is to be double-minded, is what she's saying. Yeah, that's what that means. So you can be a hoe, or you can dress covered up, and be, and, and, and it's all good. Go ahead. Yeah, so, just covered up hoe. So you can be a hoe that's naked, like Megan Thee Stallion, or like you said, you could be a covered up hoe. Damn, this stuff is deep, y'all. This stuff is deep. Get me uh, Ciroc 26 and 9 real quick. Real quick, real quick. Ciroc 26, verse 9. Read. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haunty looks. The, the whoredom, the, 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 the whole that she is, is known by her haughty looks, by how she looks with that trying to, go ahead, keep reading. And eyelids. And eyelids. When You can see it in her eyes. That's a hoe. This is what it's telling you. So when you see that and a sister is, is giving you the eyes, you know, we say that in the world. She's giving you that look. Why they say that? Because you can see it in their face. You can see it how they dressed. That's a hoe. Hey, ho. That is just, we're going to just take, that's just what I'm be saying for real. Hey, ho. But uh, anyway, play the video, five minutes, 10 seconds. Not yeah, I don't be mind. Y'all yeah, know I'm crazy. Other, but to allow space for all of us to show comfortable. And that also, like, we're all entitled to our journey. So it may not always look the same, but that's fine. Like, we're allowed to figure it out because we're complex human beings. Stop. That's no, dead. you're not. Go ahead, say it. She's basically saying, I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to do whatever the hell I want right. to do. I'm allowed. It's my body. I'm allowed to be Watch the, no, dressed like a hoe. Let's yeah. see, what the, see what the scripture says. Go ahead. Yeah, the very next church, right? That's huh? where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and I'm going back to that. Go read. No, no. Yeah, read the next scripture, verse 10. So, Rock 26, verse 10. Uh huh. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. The Bible said what she's saying is a lie. You cannot do what you want to do. Give me Proverbs 331. Read that. Proverbs 331. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Feminism started with white women. Don't choose that. Because it's BS. Choose none of his ways. Jump up to verse 5. Verse 5. Read. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Uh Uh-huh. And lean not unto thy own understanding. And lean not unto your own understanding. Don't think that it's okay to be Megan Thee Stallion hoe or Indy Irie covered up hoe. Read. In all thy ways, acknowledge in him. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord. Read. And he shall direct thy path. He's going to direct your paths. Why? Because it's going to be righteous. It's going to be what God wants for our women, not what you want for our women. Read. Read down to verse 7. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes, sisters. Read. Fear, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Stop being a wicked Negro. Hit play on the video. 
dealing with a lot of layered stuff and and we need the space to sort of work through that and the community to, to hold us and support us while we do that stop go ahead educated sisters man it's crazy man go back to uh what did you just read sirak 26 26 and 9 that, read, verse 10. yeah read verse 9 one more time well, where you going if you, if you oh hold on let me ask you first i was gonna go to sirak eight i'm sorry nine so yeah 26 and nine yeah. yeah we and then, no, no, no. I want to go back to that and then go to Sirach 9. You got Sirach 9? No, no, I don't. I don't. Go okay. Go. I, I was making sure. Read uh, Sirach, what was it, 26? Uh -huh. Real quick. Verse so, 9. Sirach 26 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haunted looks and eyelids. Right. So you know a woman by how she looks, right? Now go to Sirach 9 and start at verse 5. Sirach chapter 9 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid. Say, gaze not on a maid. That thou for not by those things that are precious in her. What is precious in a woman? Mm, it is. <laughs> right? So you're going to fall. You're going to fall if you gaze upon that woman because what's precious in her is what the man desires. It's facts. Right? Read the next verse. Give not thy soul unto a harlot. Give not thy soul unto a harlot. Read. That thou lose not thy inheritance. For brothers that want sisters like this. Say so break it down to a piece of bread. Break it down to a piece of bread. You're going to lose that inheritance. Everything. All right? Everything. Great scripture. Go to the, uh, the African-American family structure. So remember what we just saw with these sisters, right? Watch this. Read that. African-American family structure. The family structure of African Americans has. Because remember what they were saying, right? The community has to support them and uphold them. And feminism. Watch this. Has long been a matter of national public policy interest. Uh huh. I a wonder why. <laughs> a 1965 report by Daniel Patrick Monihan, known yeah. as the Monihan Report, examined the link between black poverty and family structures. <laughs> It hypothesized that the destruction of the black nuclear family structure would hinder further progress toward economic and political equality. They have been knowing this. Damn. Go ahead, say what you're gonna say. No, that goes back to uh, uh, what uh, J. Edgar Hoover said. Yes. That all ties in together. Yes. The eugenics program Everything. and all that stuff. They know that the black family is where it all starts. Yes. So we're gonna do everything we can to destroy it. Over sexualize them, uh, overtly sexualize them. We're going to put them low income, whatever you can think of. They know that those things are tied together. If we can have them, uh, if we can, if we can, what do you say? Uh, put them in economic and uh, uh, political uh, downfall, they're going to be destroyed. It will hinder them from growing. If we put them in a destructive environment, if we, if we destroy the, the, the nucleus of the family, have the man out there on the streets in jail on drugs, have the woman showing her butt all over the social media, thinking she's independent, give her her degrees, all those things we know they'll never rise. That's this report that they did in 65. Now, it's, it's crazy that it said this came out in 65. What was happening in 65? It was uh, headed to the moon. Yeah, but I'm but and I'm saying what was civil, happening with our families during the six during this during sixty five. It was during the civil rights uh, civil rights movement, and when when families were had the support of the structure it, of the family. There we go. Why did the report came out in the height of us trying to build our families, height of us civil rights? Let's stick together. Let's have the father in because I'm not trying to say your age, but you was born, you know. Around that time, you know, I don't want to be savage. He was but, there. It was 1970. Okay, all right. Well, never mind. We can't use him then. <laughs> Daniel! No. <laughs> he tried to duck behind the curtain back there. Daniel. <laughs> what year you was born, Daniel? 68. Oh, okay. But, uh, but, but growing up, did you not see families and all that together? That was a normal thing, the families sticking together. So in 65, they did a report. We know if we could destroy the black nuclear family structure, it'll stop them, their economic and political growth. They did the report in 65. Y'all, it went over y'all head when y'all seen that year. Keep reading. When more Nihon wrote, is this that, more, anyway. Okay. 
Monihan, Mohihan. I'm gonna call him that. <laughs> Monihan wrote in. He ain't 19- gad, bro. <laughs> he just said he's Irish, man. Yeah. Monihan, not Mohinan, whatever the hell he said. <laughs> Go ahead. Go. <laughs> Wrote in 1965 on the coming destruction of the black the family. The coming destruct, the coming destruction. All right. This, just watch. The out of wedlock birth rate was 25 percent among black. So people. even back then, so it was bad, right? 25 percent. The coming destruction is what he wrote about. Read. In 1991. 68% of black children were born outside of marriage. So in 91, 68% of children were born outside of marriage. Read. Where marriage is defined with a government issue. So they're they telling you what's real marriage. So yes, get in writing. Get, you, get your papers, Negroes. It's a nigga that, man, I got seven, I mean, not hoes, uh, <laughs> wives. Uh, Moses and them did it. Like, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. They all work. He's still at the house. Scratching. Playing video games. Man, come on. Keep reading. In 2011, 72% of black babies were born to unmarried mothers. 72%. They, they predict. They, you know, they say numbers don't lie. Yes. So they knew back in 65. Yes. Give it a couple of years, these people are going to be destroyed. Yeah. With what they're doing. Even worse off. Destroy yeah. the black nuclear family. So all kind of things tied in there. Go ahead. Okay, look at them. Five years later. Five years later, so it, it, uh, in 1965, it was at 25 percent. You look at that graph, that chart. In 1970, it was already at 40 percent. Damn! It started work, so it was all planned. It was all planned. Black Native American, those are the ones, and look, and Latino, those are the top three on that line. Look at the top three lines. That's black. That's Native. You see the purple? Oh, okay. Black. I see. Black. Is the purple. gray, Native American. The orange, Latino. Right then and there, they knew we got them. We got the Israelites. That's why in Psalms 83, it said they, uh, they puffed up. They, they lift up the head. Why? Because we got them. Damn. All right. Uh, scroll down. Read that. Among all newlyweds. Among all newlyweds, 18%. Of- Watch this. Watch this. So... Keep in mind, we already have 72% of them born out of, out of wedlock, right? We're not getting married is what they're letting you know. But watch this. Among all newlyweds, 18% of black Americans in 2015 married non-black spouses. We start running to the other nations. So not only do we have kids out of wedlock, we start running to the other nations now. Now it's normal. Every Listen, I was what was I watching? I was watching this show called... It was on Netflix. It's a new show. Um, the Watcher. I don't know if y'all seen it. That's a good show. And mm, okay. I, at the end of it, like they were showing like uh, like all the time you see interracial marriages. I remember seeing an interracial couple on the show. So what I'm saying is what we're seeing now is common to see a black woman with a white man or a white man or a white woman with a, a black man. Most of the time, it's the black woman with the white man. But we're seeing that all the time now. They're pushing that. So we don't marry. So that means that black people don't think about marriage unless it's with another nation. That's where it's headed to. Read. Among all newlyweds, 18% of black Americans in 2015 married non-black spouses. 24% of all black male newlyweds in 2015 married outside their race. Compared with 12% of black female newlyweds. So it's actually black men. Okay. Yeah. Let me flip it. So it's actually the black man. I, I stand corrected. They run into white women. Or other nations, right? Read. 5.5% of black males married white women in 1990. So look how far that jumped. Yeah. I was watching Deacon Asaph. I was watching his class uh, that he did this, this Friday night. And he spoke about... Um, he spoke about Kanye West. What was his lyric? Uh, when he get on, he leave your ass for a white girl. He, he said that, and then everything he spoke on, he did. Go back I, I, hey, go back and watch Deacon Asa because he was clowning him about that. Right, right. That's exactly what happened. He left the, uh, the, the sister that he was with, married a white woman immediately when he got all that money and all that notoriety. 
First thing he did was run against what he wrote about in his own damn song. Are people crazy? Watch this. Go to Google. Type in, in Google, type in Glorilla Tomorrow 2 lyrics. I want y'all to see what these sisters is talking about. No, oh, she ain't going to stop. This is a, a song that she has with, uh, <laughs> see that. this is a song that she has with um, Cardi B. Cardi B. I just want to read some of the lyrics and just so you see the mindset. Read the, the, the this first little, not the one at the top, the, the popping ish, popping pop popping shit. Just say it. you can say it how it is. That's what she wrote. He didn't want to say it. <laughs> Go ahead, man. It's not you. Like this is our word. <laughs> like ooh, oh yeah, uh, pop popping shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's you an accent, think, y'all. Stop. <laughs> you, would, you would think I went to school for chiropractic popping. So when you see in the in the. Uh, Parentheses at the end, that's the ad lib. So you gotta imagine, like, say, popping. I like, I know it's saying popping. But go ahead. Looking good as hell today. Just sent my nigga five attachments. Which I think that's she talking about. Pictures. That's what our women do. That's why I said in the parentheses. Look at this. That's the ad lib. Look at this. Right? You gotta say it in the ad lib voice, right? Anyway, keep, keep going. Why did you confront me about that by the nigga? Man, you bitches backwards, stupid ass. <laughs> They came, they come at me about niggas who I don't even find attractive. Uh, I don't know the nigga. I just seen him on the town before. Kala, why are you laughing? I can't, I can't be up in her face. I took her nigga down before. Nah. Wow. When you I know lose- what she saying? I can't be in her face because I slept with her man, is what she's saying. That's what she's, these sisters, are, they don't give a damn. Remember, we just read about the black family structure. You think this is going to build the structure? You know how many of our daughters sing this song and will get hype as hell? Go ahead. When I lose a nigga, I just pop out and go find some more. Wait a second. When she lose a Negro, she just go find another one. Uh, Hey, ho. Yeah, uh, easy. Right. It's easy. Read. Read. Soon as I feel like my time get wasted, then it's time to go. Deuces. Wow. Well, we just didn't we just read about the the, the murder on up. I ain't, she ain't getting pregnant by no nigga. She mm-hmm. what she telling you? I'm gonna knock him. He gonna knock her down, and she's gone. Soon as my time wasted, I'm out of here. She gonna find another dude. Read I, read Hebrews 13. As a matter of fact, no, don't read it yet. Don't read it yet. Don't read it yet. Um, keep scroll down. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. This next one at the bottom that my ex fucking my old friend. Jeez. This is Cardi B. Read that. Oh, this is Cardi B. I think right. so, yes. <laughs> my ex fucking my on my old friend. Oh, they ass some fucking clowns. Aha. <laughs> Thinking that she got one up on me. She got my hand me downs. Lame ass hoe. He thought wasn't gonna he thought wasn't gonna have to stand on shit. Like he was handicapped, thought it was. Make that nigga stand on that. Now his ass can't stand me now. High as fuck. I'm lit. Yeah, I don't smoke no switches. Nope. Sliding with my gang and them. Look at them like sisters. That's gang. Stop. Look, I, we ain't gonna, I, we're not going to go through the whole song, but I'm trying to get y'all to see the mindset of these are the rappers. These are the, the wealthy people that's being pushed on social media. That's being pushed on YouTube. That's being pushed throughout the world. They had this woman who just said all the stuff Jeremiah just read. She was the one they had sit with. Who was that? Trump. Was it her? Yeah, Cardi B sat with one of the presidents. They had her sit with the political people to represent the blacks and Hispanics. This person. What the hell are we talking about, man? She's talking about the first one was talking about uh, uh, sexing somebody else, man. This one, t- and she gonna go into it too. Y'all don't listen, man. We this and this is our women that's pushing this. Remember, for a long time, all like let's say some of you brothers are hip hop heads. I was one in the world. You heard the men speaking like this. You that when they started to usher it in, they ushered it in with Lil Kim. That's who it really started with. The degrading, sexualized lyrics. 
Now all female rappers do that. Remember, at first we had Lauren Hill. We had, uh, you know, uh, uh, MC Light. No, they weren't talking that crap. Well, no, no, Salt and Pepper was. was. Let me. They was. They. They. Let me. It started with them. Let's say Salt and Pepper. And then with the ushering of Lil Kim, she took it a little bit further. Now, you. You're not gonna find. You think you're gonna find uh, a Lauren Hill now? How could you? The only thing that's going to sell is you talking about your ass. Go to the, watch this. So keep those lyrics in mind. Go to the next video, which is Deacon Ace. I started 28 minutes and 8 seconds. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm not hip to these songs. So, yeah. you know, so actually reading the lyrics yes. is like, it's crazy. Uh, you see, you got it? Yeah. Tw this is Deacon Ace Friday Night Raw. The love music now is some black woman with a big behind twerking and talking about the nastiness she's going to do to you and the nastiness she's going to do to her. Everything is explicit. Everything is disgusting. Everything is just atrocious. And you can't let your kids listen. Before you can let your kids listen to the song, and they, they, there would be catchphrases. Okay, I want to make love to you. I want to get next to you. That lovey-dovey stuff. Now, I want to bend you over. I want to do this to you. I want to do that to you. It's, it's, it's just look at how music has changed. And look how the artists have changed. There. And then you, you see that? So he spoke on it. When you go back and watch the whole thing, you'll see. And that's what's happening. That is what's going on. Now, get the Willie Lynch, the nigga marriages. We... Huh? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Did you send it? Let me see. We'll read it. We'll, you know, it, it, cause I remember him speaking about it, about how how they make the man and the woman. Yep. Willie Lynch, let's make a slave. The Negro marriage unit. We breed we breed two nigger males with two nigger females. Then we take the nigger males from them, keep them moving and working. What you think that is today? Think about prisons. Think about them being on the streets, all this, the gangs, all this other stuff. Keep him away. Drives. He got to work 12-hour days to pay bills. Okay. Watch this. Say the one nigga female bear a nigga female and the other bears a nigga male. So he's saying one of them have a, a daughter, the other have a son. Both nigga females being without the influence of the nigga image froze with an independent psychological Psychology. with an independent psychology. That's what we was just looking at. All the stuff we've been going over. The, uh, the sisters that were sitting down in the circle was talking about that. The community have to uplift us. It's feminism. That's an independent psychology. Read. Will raise their offspring into reverse positions. Wait a second. They'll raise the children in reverse positions. Read. The one with the female offspring will teach her to be like herself. Independent and negotiable. He says independent and negotiable. Who is she negotiating with, sisters? I'm asking you. The who? The white man. She's not negotiating with her man. Mm -hmm. Read. He ain't there. So her thought process is who? The white man. So when you see our sisters doing the feminism, the twerking, the murder on my mind, whose ideology is that? The white man's, and they love it. That's what's happening. Read. We negotiate with her, through her, by her, and negotiate at her will. Uh-huh. So they break her. She's going to follow whatever they tell her to do, is what they're saying. Read. The one with the nigger male offspring, she being frozen with a subconscious fear for his life. Why? Because she's seeing her man being destroyed. Read. Will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak. But physically strong. I'm gonna tell you something now. It that's what we see. That's why all these men are emotional. That's number one. We understand that's exactly what happens. Now, let me talk to you sisters directly right now. This is for the sisters that's in the truth. Those that's watching on the camera and that's here. I want you to understand something. The the way you raise your sons now, you still sometimes have a Willie Lynch spirit. On, it, on you when you're dealing with your children. It's a lot of the times I've seen, I had to even tell my wife, I'm not going to let you Willie Lynch my son. What I mean by that, you are not, the, the, I, the, the daughters that you have, it's exactly what he said. You're a little bit tougher on him. 
You know you're going to be all right. Stop, you know, stop crying. Stop doing this. And as soon as you have a son, you hold on to him like he is just... Yeah. Just speak on it. Speak on it. I'm looking at you because I'm 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 like you hold on to him. Yes, and you baby the hell out of him. Yes, you will get up in the middle of the night and do all kind of whatever, stuff you won't even whatever. do for your own husband. Hold on, say that. Say that again. I said you'll get up in the middle of the night. You'll make a sandwich at three o'clock in the morning for your for your, for your son. son a he grilled might. cheese. Let your husband ask you to make a grilled cheese at three in the morning. Uh-oh. Yo, you gonna you might Nigga. slap him. <laughs> Nigga. Make what? You make your own damn sandwich. Listen, and that's another class too. Y'all gonna be real mad at that one. I'm, I'm coming with that that's one. That's a fact. That's the next one. That's a fact. How you treat these sons and how you treat your children higher than you treat your husband. And uh, and it's a lot. And it's most useless in the truth that do that. You put your children above the man. Oh, don't that class coming? Don't worry. Go ahead. Say what you finna say. I'll, I'll save it for that class. Okay. All right. It says the one with the nigga male offspring. There, this is hundreds of years ago. She being frozen with a subconscious fear for his life will raise him to be mentally dependent. And we, who is he mentally dependent on, sisters? His mama. mama. I can't sing the song how Bishop sing it, so I ain't gonna try. But y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> about to love your mama, you know that. Judah knew. Yeah, brother, be a football player, weak as hell. And guess what? His mama, she Willie lynched him. And you sisters try to do the same thing with your kids now. Treat that you treat them them them, them boys. They can't do no damn wrong. You're a demon. Yeah, he's Bad as hell. Cap, I just realized they played it in the commercials for the NFL. What's that? The Campbell Soup commercial. The man. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, yes. They really showing they show Willie Lynch in action. Exactly, and our sisters follow it. They follow it to a T. Being destroyed, being they, destroyed. Go ahead. They, the men never say. The men never say. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see my father. Like, it's no, like, I'm going to Disney World with my mama. Yeah, I'm going to buy my mama a house. I'm going to buy my mama this. I always want to buy my mama this. It's never. And and, they, and 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 a lot of them, they will have. Some of them will have their daddies there. Don't say nothing about them. Only person I've seen say something about their daddy that's in sports is John ja Morant. He the only one that speak about it. His dad be on it. They talk about and the little uh, Levar Ball them. Those are the only ones you see. And remember how they treated LeVar Ball. He's abusing the children. He's Willie Lynch right there. He's teaching his sons to be men and the whole nation. And it wasn't, it wasn't just Esau. That was just putting out there for Jake to, to soak that up. Right. It was Jake who was complaining. Esau, Why are you treating them like that? They can do what they want to do. Shut up. Esau does exactly that. Yeah. That's why they have name brands. Egg. <laughs> yeah, all of them. It's us. It's us. You really lynch the son. They do it live. And sisters in the truth, y'all do it too. Stop really lynching our sons. I will. Let me let it go. Let me let it go. You're right. Um, give me, I, all right, let me just skip those then. Go to the next uh, video. The YouTube short. Because remember, the, they're psychologically dependent and, I, and I went, uh, depending on the white man, that's what our women are. And they don't, want to deal with a man, right? They want to be independent. They want to be, uh, uh, they want to be feminist. To hell with listening to a man. That's how it is with this sexualization. That's what's happening. That's what we see. Watch this. Play the video. So this is, this dude with this, with this phone, he went around and he asked the women, do you want to be in relationships? Do you want to be married? Let's see what's, what they say. I don't even do the boyfriends. I don't, do, don't the boyfriends. do boyfriends. I don't do the boyfriends. So what you do? One night stands, I just said that. I don't like commitment. I don't do no motherfucking relationship. You don't do relationship? Nah, that shit dead for the motherfucking bird. Ah, I'm not the marrying type. I don't do marriage. I'm one I'm I'm more of a, you know, solo type of bitch. Oh, city boy! It's an evil world we live in. <laughs> These are the young women. I don't, they say, I don't want no relationship. I don't be with nobody. I just want to have sex. One, yeah, call yourself a B. One night stands. That's all they want. Give me Sirach 26, reverse 11 and 12. She's not the Marion B. That's what she said. And then I'm going to show you in the next, after these couple scriptures, I'm going to show you how we know that it's, that the music industry is designed to make our women do, like, to be this way. Watch, and you'll see. Give me Sirach 26, verse 11. Sirach chapter 26, verse 11. Read. Watch over an impotent eye uh-huh. and marvel not if she trespass against thee. Uh-huh. 
She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. She will. So you got to watch these whorish sisters. Said she will open her. Say, read it again. Verse 20, uh, verse 12. Verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. That means she's what? Y'all know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. She opening her mouth to every man is what, it, is what it's saying. Read. When he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. She's going to, yeah, read. Hey, ho. Read. But every hedge will she sit down uh -huh. and open, open her quiver against every arrow. You see that? She's going to have sex with every man. She's going to open her legs to every man she finds. This sister just said, I don't want a relationship. I want one night stands. What you think she's doing? What y'all think is going on? That's what the Bible says. That's that impudent eye. That's that whorish sister. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say. They literally playing Russian roulette. Yes, they are. Watch this. Literally. Give me Sirach 25. Verse 24 and 25. Watch this. This is what we're supposed to do because the, the, the panel that we saw earlier, the women, they were like, we're supposed to get support of the community. We could do whatever the hell we want to do. Okay, let's see. So Rock, chapter 25, verse 24. Read. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Read that again. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. So we understand our sisters can be wicked as hell. Read. And through her, we all die. Through that woman... We all die. And y'all talking about y'all want to be damn feminists. And I'm mad, please. We can't put y'all in no position of no type of power at all. Why? Because you're gonna we already dying because of y'all. Just imagine how much worse it'll be. Read. Give the water no passage. Don't give her no resource. Don't give her nothing. It says give the water no passage. It's talking about the wicked woman. Give her no passage. Read. Neither a wicked woman. Liberty. To gad abroad. Meaning what? Do whatever the hell she want. We won't allow it. That's why these the sisters and a lot of women, even in the truth, they can't deal with that. When Ephesians 5 get brought out, you got to submit. It ain't about you. 1 Corinthians 11, when it says that you were made for him, not him for you, a lot of sisters can't deal with that. A lot of righteous sisters in here call their husbands bands all the time. You know what band is? A B-ass nigga. That's what they call them. The scriptures say, don't give that wicked woman no liberty to gather abroad. You can't do what you want to do. No, you can't have your own thoughts, sister, because your own thoughts is going to be damn Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion. That's, that's your thoughts. It's never going to be something that's going to be righteous. It's always going to be something pertaining to sexualization of yourself. Uh, uh, all the nonsense, like that's what it's going to be. It's never going to be something that's going to uplift the community and push us forward. Every time a woman is given to her own thoughts, she's going to start to disrespect her man. That's what the scriptures say. It says, give that woman no liberty to do what she want to do. No way. Hell no. Y'all ain't finna destroy this. That's why we're so tough on the women now, because we know if we allow them to, to run rampant, they're going to destroy everything we're trying to build. Like it says in Proverbs 14 and 1, she's going to tear that. While we're building up the wall, She's going to take every brick we put up. She's going to take it back down. That's what the women do. That's what the wicked woman does. That's why we teach the way we do. That's why we try to get y'all to understand. That's what this class is for. You see what's going on in the world. You be the sister out there talking about murder on your damn mind. Shh. Anyway, Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Three. Marriage is honorable in all. So, sisters, one night stands ain't good for you sisters in the world. That ain't what the Lord wants. It says marriage is honorable in all. Read. And the bed undefiled. That bed is undefiled. You do whatever you want to do with your husband. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. All the people that we've seen today, all the stuff we see, they're going to be judged because of that. That feminism nonsense, that, that sexualization, all that crap. Our people are going to be judged for that. They need to repent. All right? Uh, now, remember I said, I'm going to show you that we know it's by design, right? Because these rap, like you, we just read about Cardi B, all that stuff she was saying, all that craziness, and uh, Glorilla, whatever her name is. I want you to play the next video with Jess Hilarious. Hey, y'all. What's up? 
I'm a little mad about something. We try to live up to this hot girl, city girl shit. I'm talking about we walk around, fuck these niggas, pop this pussy, get this money, fuck a bitch, fuck a bitch. And our fucking leaders are in love. These bitches in whole relationships. These bitches teaching us how to hop on and off dicks, steal money from niggas while they sleep, how to finesse a nigga out of his drugs so we can go sell it. And they over here living happily ever after. We keep standing at the bottom of the steps waiting for Megan and city girls to drop more songs with more instructions on how to fuck our lives up these bitches is rich and in love bitch and we broke and single well i ain't broke but i'm for the people so i'm gonna act broke today megan you want to help us rap about how you got money back yo young miami is happily in love with a nigga who said she ugly with her wig off if that ain't love i don't know what the fuck is nikki how did you get kenny cardi how you still going strong with offset iggy how did you get playboy that's like taking relationship advice from a single bitch come on did you want us to be hot girls but y'all having a sierra summer she called him out go ahead Controversy going on. Yeah. You saying one thing in your lyrics, but you live in a totally different life. That proves that it's pushed by the industry. Right. Because I remember we saw a video where Cardi B said she won't even let her daughter hear her music. Well, why the hell are you making it then? Right, but you killing our kids. Yeah. Left and then, right. then she said something about she don't clean the house or something like that. And it was a video. Yeah. Her husband, Offset was her like talking yeah. about you don't clean the house. Yeah. I saw that. He, she, 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 got a, she got a broom <laughs> sweeping up the house. <laughs> Talk about you don't clean. Talk yeah, about right. you don't clean. Yeah, right. They put that in the song, and like that, like that sister just said, they she said, y'all, we waiting on your next song to give us instructions on what to do. Our women are looking at these rap sisters and thinking that's what they supposed to do. Destroying it, just destroying it. They don't give a damn about no Titus too. They don't care about no Bible. What we doing next, Cardi B? We supposed to do what? Is hot girl some of this? Okay, so we can do whatever we want to do now. We she said hop on and hopping off of penises. But the, hold on, say it again. Say it on the, But you, but you married in a mansion with your kids, and, and don't want to leave your husband. Yeah. Don't don't want you want a happy household. But every song you are gonna talk about how you finna. Oh, hey, that that's how you know it's a, a programming. There's a software update. They're just waiting for the next. There version. it is. Yeah, waiting for the update. You show yeah. right. Damn, they in the matrix for real. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to see. This overt sexualization is destroying everything. Everything. Watch this. Go to Ciroc 38, 20, uh, 34. We almost done, y'all. Ciroc 38, 34. Ciroc 38, verse 34. Watch this. But they will maintain the state of the world. That's what they're doing. That's what Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion, all these women, that's what they're doing. Maintaining the state of the world, read. And all their desire is of the work of their craft. You see that? That's their desire. The money that they're getting from this music. You know, they don't care that they're destroying all... You, it, it's and what's crazy is they get all that money and then they get disconnected from the hood. You think Cardi B is driving through the hoods of, in America when she's on these tours and all that? No, you at the best hotels, you at the best places, you seeing nothing but Edomites. You don't care. Hey, this is a song. You're not in the community to see what's going on. You're not seeing that girl who who just had another abortion go out to the club that night and dance to your song and have another and get pregnant again and then kill that baby. But you sit here, you you going to the doctors to make sure you still can have children. Because you want you might want another child. You ain't rapping about that. You won't rap about that. You won't rap about the married life and, and how you enjoy being married, how you wanna you, they don't rap like that. Do you know why? Because they you know what they say? I won't it won't sell. Well, how about you do it and find out? They won't. It's it's a trap, man. It's a trap. They're gonna maintain the state of this world. Give me first Ezra 5, verse 73. Verse Ezra chapter 5 and verse 73. Read. And by their secret plots and popular persuasion and com commotion, they in hindered the finishing of the building uh -huh. and all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building. For the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Right. So what we want is to seek the plots and the persuasions. That's what they're doing. The plots that they have on our people. Because we've been dealing with it from a standpoint of the women in, in sexualization. But play the next video. It is the, the sexualization of children. At what age is it appropriate for grammar school teachers to discuss issues like sex and gender with their students? Should it be done with kids as young as pre-K, second grade, fifth? Even a decade ago, the most common answer would have been never. 
These are simply not appropriate subjects for young children. If for some reason they did have to be raised, it would be the parents' job, not the teachers. Today, it's much different. Now these are pressing questions and very much on the minds of parents. They're part of what the media calls the culture war. But parents didn't start this war. The war has been waged on us. Until recently, we had no idea it was even happening. Now it's hand-to-hand combat, school boards versus mom and dad. It's not clear who's winning. Starting in September 2022, New Jersey first graders will learn about gender identity under new sex education guidelines. A sample lesson plan reads as follows. You might feel like you're a boy, even if you have body parts, as some people might tell you are girl parts. You might feel like you're a girl, even if you have body parts, as some people might tell you are boy parts. And you might not feel like you're a boy or a girl, but you're a little bit of both. No matter how you feel, you're perfectly normal. Yes, Junior might be struggling with his fractions, but never fear. He's rock solid on his preferred pronouns. The Evanston Skokie School District 65 in Illinois has adopted a new LGBTQ plus Equity Week curriculum that will teach kids in pre-K and kindergarten about people who have more than one gender or no gender at all. Kids in first grade can pick their own pronouns, including Z, Zer, and Tree, and are told they can switch pronouns anytime they wish. All feelings are respected all the time. Yes, it said Tree. Just hold on, watch. Keep, keep playing. Eight year- Third graders, generally around eight years old, are also encouraged to overcome their prejudice that gender is binary. Parents have mounted a counterattack. Our deep concern that our children are being prematurely sexualized and thus confused about their identity is manifest in Florida's Parental Rights and Education Act. Its text plainly states that discussion of sexual orientation is out of bounds. Oh, pause it, pause it. Say the mic. Good state to live in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> for now. You know, Florida at always get their delegates all that. That's, yeah. Hey, they need to. Governor, this is nonsense. The, the governor just passed that. Yeah. 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 About, about this? Yeah, that yeah. was it. It's out of bounds. You can't talk about that in the schools. And right, at least for now, right? If they well, if they get him out of office, they're going to go back on everything he ever did. Hit, hit play. This piece of legislation, which now has counterparts in several other states, has in turn been mocked by progressives. Setting aside the appropriateness of teaching small children that their gender is malleable or that kids designating tree as their preferred pronoun is okay, progressives say the Florida law is unnecessary. Why? Because these progressives claim these lessons aren't actually taught. They are a figment of the parents' imagination. Some figment. But if this is all just a fever dream on the right, then opponents of these bills are caught in their own circular logic. If these topics aren't taught in schools, then why is the bill controversial? Florida would be legislating against nothing. But that's not what's happening. Exactly. Recently, you understand? The- you said if, if what you're saying is true, then the the bill is it, why have it? If you're not teaching it, why would we have the bill? It's a it'll be for nothing. Recently, in the Glendale Unified School District in California, parents confronted their school board after they learned that a third grade teacher had shown their kids videos for Gay Pride Month that included nudity and discussions of sexual arousal. A decade ago, this teacher would have been chased out of town with pitchforks, metaphorically speaking. Today, it's controversial. The purpose of the Florida law is to stop this sort of education. Activists and their media allies say the Florida bill stigmatizes kids who are not heterosexual or who have gay parents. Never mind that being straight is also a sexual orientation. The point is, any classroom discussion about sex... Never mind it, the, the majority of the world is straight. But now we have to stop every... Man, these people are crazy as hell, so they not. it's not just... A, about our women. They're coming for our children, too. Hit play. And gender identity should be off the table. It's not surprising parents want to protect their small children from inappropriate lessons that have nothing to do with what school is supposed to be about. You know, quaint notions like reading, writing, and arithmetic. What's surprising is that it's even an issue at all. Why is this madness, and what is it if not madness, even happening? And who's behind it? It's not like there was a crying demand from seven-year-old boys to identify themselves as a girl or as a boy and a girl. Paul, I'm glad she said that because I want y'all to think about something. For for us that's older, right? I'm I'm in there. I got grades. I'm in there too. When I was coming up, this was never even a thought to talk about. 
That's why she said it. Why are we? Why is this an issue? There is no seven year olds that's walking around like, yo, I'm a girl. That that doesn't happen. The thought is being placed in their minds. That's what's happening. Hit play. These questions are not easy to answer. The sudden eruption of madness is never easily explained. But this much is not in doubt. You're not crazy. They're crazy. You're not crazy to be worried about what your children are learning in school. They're crazy for wanting your children to ponder their sexual identity in second grade. Say you didn't start this. That's it right there. That, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the point right there. A lot of them teachers is obviously LGBT. They have to be. You know what I'm saying? They have to they be have to be to showing be. videos of butt naked parades and all this <laughs> stuff to third graders. That don't make no that damn don't make sense. no damn sense. That was, Obviously, that demon is on them. Exactly, because we never. That's not normal, y'all. We never seen that. Go to Revelations twelve and seventeen. I'm gonna show you something. Revelations twelve seventeen. Y'all gotta. We we think when we say at war, we thinking about us saying that we're the Jews, right? Openly, it's not just that. We that's why we went over the sexualization of our women first. Now we're seeing they're targeting our children. We are at war, y'all. Watch this. Read Revelation chapter seventeen. 12, verse 17. Uh -huh. And the dragon was rough with the woman. Uh -huh. So understand, everything that they're doing is, is, is based or directed at our children. Because this is going to be in public schools. Who are the... Who, who's majority in those public schools? It's going to be us. Jake and... and, and uh, Jake, it's Jake General. Blacks and Hispanics. We're the ones in the public schools. Keep reading. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, uh -huh. which keep the commandments of God. That's the attack right there. We're going to blanket it. Because Esau, let me tell you something. Esau is crazy and, tact, and tact, tactful enough to they'll destroy some of their people in the process to keep this kingdom going. Don't think for a second that they're going to, because I know some of you might have a thought, well, it's affecting their own people, so they probably ain't going to do it, right? You crazy. To keep this kingdom going, they'll destroy everybody in the in the building. Long as it keeps these Negroes from waking up, we got them. We'll destroy every damn thing. Keep reading. And I'll just say something. Is that the verse 17? No, that's not the end of it yet. All right, read. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So those that's keeping up commandments, that's the full battle right there. Everything you see is to systematically get our people. Everything. Go ahead. You ask me what to say? I was, just, I was just saying that um Esau doesn't mind collateral damage on his own race. At all. If it's a, if it's against the Israelites, he don't mind collateral yeah. damage. They, they, yeah. Hey, kill them all is how they'll think. Abortion, all that stuff. They don't care. Why? Their whole goal is to stop. Because it's not the rich white people that's going through the abortions and going through the LGBT stuff. and They're not going through that. It's the regular white folks that don't know a damn thing. The dumb ones. Oh, knock them off. We don't care about them. If we can get them, like Aaron said, if we can get the Israelites, get everybody. Watch this. Go to Obadiah 1, verse 21. Because you got to understand something. If you can get our women to, dis to distance themselves from the man, to be feminist, to be independent, right? And then you, at the same time, if you can get the kids to want to be homosexual and not bring forth any type of future, watch this. Read this. This is how Esau think. Watch this. Obadiah, verse 21. Uh -huh. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. Was that an S at the end of saviors? And saviors. You see that? That's plural. Esau smart enough to know it's not just one we're looking for. Read. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. So they're going to do everything they can to stop those saviors from coming. If we can put homosexuality in a... In in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the school systems for these kids, in the public school systems. Let's get our sisters, these women, well, they're not saying our sisters, but let's get these nigga women uh, to, to uh, murder on their mind at the abortion. Abort all them kids. It's your choice. It's your right. And you're a feminist. You don't need that, man. Get them out of here. They're trying everything in their power to stop these saviors from coming. And they're using the sexualization, and they're using overt sexualization to do it. And it's attacking every aspect of our community, of our nation. Esau is that. I know people probably think, man, they ain't going that deep. That's why I went to the scriptures I went to at the beginning. That's why I went to Psalm 64 at the beginning. That's why I went to Psalms 83 at the very beginning. So you'll see exactly what we're talking about. You'll see it for yourself. 
Right? Is that it on that verse? And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Listen, Esau going to do everything they can to stop that. That's what we read in Revelation 12. They're at war with us because us coming into the understanding is the destruction of their nation. Play the next video. It is the message from the gay community. We've seen this before, but I want y'all to see it again. The progress we've made over these past years. As we celebrate I want the progress we've I looked at the comments of this, right? And what they were saying was, well, he's not saying that, that to be gay, but you got to accept gay people and their right to be gay. That's what he said. We're trying to convert them. That's what he said. We'll convert your children. Not necessarily that they're going to be gay, but they're going to accept it and live with it and be okay with it and love us and all the other nonsense. Watch this. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. They're talking about equal rights. What are you? You're an Edomite. What are you talking about? You don't have you don't have issues with your credit, you know, getting a house. You're not red, you're not going through redlining. What are you talking about? You're not systematically oppressed and put in prison because you're gay. Cause, bro, these people are insane. Insane. Hit play. You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened You think that we'll corrupt your kids If our agenda goes unchecked Funny, just this once, you're correct We'll convert your children Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly And you will barely notice it You can keep them from disco Warn about San Francisco Make him wear pleated pants, we don't care We'll convert your children We'll make them tolerant and fair <laughs> Overt sexualization They targeting our children Yo, these people are bruh Trust me, they are at war with us Give me Romans 1 Give me Romans 1 and 25. Because they want you to accept it and be tolerant. And Okay, let's see what God says. Romans 1, 25. Read kind of fast. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Read. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Uh -huh. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Right, read. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. So because you turn, changed the truth of God to a lie, God says, I gave them up to vile affections. Watch this. For even the woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You see that? And then with what Esau is pushing is, is forcing it on our people. So the Lord's like, okay, since you want to choose that, then me, God give you up the vile, I'll give you up the vile affections. Whatever. Do your thing. Watch this. And likewise, also the man, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust. They what? Burn in their lust. Burn in their damn lust. Read. One towards another. Uh -huh. Men with men. Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which is Meaning which they, was me. They're going to die behind that. Read. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You see that? It says they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to retain the Lord, the understanding of the commandments. They don't want to hold on to that. Read. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God says, okay, well, I'm going to put you in, your, in a reprobate mind. How do we know that? Because when we try to get them the scriptures, they don't want to hear it. They go against it immediately. They reprobate. They're not going to repent. Read. To do those things which are not convenient, uh -huh. being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, uh -huh. without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Stop. Now, we just, Bishop just did a class on this. That, that's just 23 spirits. 23 demons is what you get from that homosexual lifestyle. That's what, we're, that's what you have to battle with. God said, you don't want to listen to me? You want to be homosexual? Here's 23 demons you got to deal with. Those are the spirits that's going to be on you because of that. So 
not only are you just dis- so think about all those 23 those things are going to contribute until contribute to them infecting other spirits other people so they're going to spread that to to their friend or whoever they friend next thing you know we having to deal with what we're dealing with today it's spreading to a point where they're trying to make it to where we all are under that banner of homosexuality. That's why it says what it says in Isaiah. If it wasn't for the Lord, if he didn't leave that remnant, we all would be in agreement with homosexuality. Everybody say, I, I wasn't going to be gay. The Bible says if the Lord didn't leave a remnant of us teaching the word of God, everybody in this room would accept homosexuality. Whether you're in it or whether you just say, oh, it's cool. The Bible says that. So we understand what they're trying to do. We understand that overt sexualization. They're trying to destroy everything. Why? Because saviors are coming. And they're trying to do everything they can to stop that. Read. Verse 32. So if you say, it's not me, I just accept it. Watch what God says. Who knowing the judgment of God, Uh that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They're going to die, those that's in homosexuality. Read. Not only do the same, Uh but have pleasure in them. That do them. So when he sings this this gay ass song he sung, our people don't realize that that's literally war. Because if you accept it, you're gonna die just like the homosexual. There's no difference in judgment on it. You're gonna die too. Watch this. Get uh, the next video. Wellness educator did. She led a class on masturbation for first graders at a Manhattan school. So in Manhattan, she showed the young- in Manhattan, a teacher taught a class on masturbation to first graders. Think about your own children, y'all. All, that's who have young kids. Zion, my daughter is old enough to be in first grade. She's first grade. Yeah, she's first grade, right? Yeah, you know, I, I be forgetting y'all. I had to look at my wife. She's right, she's first grade, right? But, uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking about that. You gonna teach my daughter that? Lord, you listen. You, I, I might have to go to jail. I might have to go to jail. Hit play. Young students, a video about children touching themselves. The film featured children cartoon characters having frank discussions about sexual activities and bodily functions, including, ready, erections and touching oneself for pleasure. Of course, the the parents of this school were particularly outraged. Somebody leaked it to the press. People were upset. I'm sure they called the administration and said, this is not okay. What? You're showing car- uh, and so that means you're showing a cartoon with an erection how, to how, these kids. How's that not child pornography? That's exactly what it is. Go ahead. The parents of this school were particularly outraged. Somebody leaked it to the press. People were upset. I'm sure. Hold they on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. She said leaked it. So they're secretly. That's why these public schools are evil as hell. Said somebody leaked it. That means the parents. Nobody knew. Think about it. What? Mo- most first graders ain't finna go home and be like, yeah, we watch this thing on masturbation. Where first graders gonna say that? They don't even know. They don't even know. Right. It just some just so happened you they got caught. Go ahead. Particularly outraged, somebody leaked it to the press. People were upset. I'm sure they called the administration and said this is not okay. But this isn't, isn't the first time she's done this, by the way. In Manhattan, she also taught a health and sexuality workshop to juniors at Columbia Grammar Preparatory School in which they all learned about different genres of porn, which included gangbang, anal, and even stepmother porn, incestuous type porn. That is what happened to 16-year-olds when they went to school. Here's a talk workshop. To Hold on. So we're going to talk to you she, about- She attacking first graders. She, uh, 16 year she don't give a damn. She got all 23. Absolutely. Hit play. And again, the parents were outraged, so outraged it got leaked to the press and it caused a firestorm online. And you would think this woman would be fired, but no, they said that she's stepping down, but they're proud of the work that Justine has done. The school has spoken out on behalf of her. The parents were not even given a heads up regarding these lessons. They drop off their children and this is what's happening. And you know, the school apologized for not giving them a heads up. Does that seem okay to you? Doesn't seem okay to me. They don't give a damn. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 14, 22 real quick. Because the problem, too, with our people is that a lot of the time, they don't know what's going on. They're not watching. A lot of times, the parents that that have those kids, especially in the world, that have those kids in those public schools, they don't give a damn. They drop them kids off and go to work or do whatever the hell they got to do. Be happy their kids ain't even there. Be mad when it's summer break because they actually got to watch their damn kids. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 22. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Uh -huh. We're almost Mo done, y'all. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God. Uh -huh. But whereas they live in great war of ignorance. They live in a great war of ignorance. Look up ignorance uh, real quick on Google. Real quick. Ignorance. Great war of ignorance. After this, we got two scriptures. Read that. Ignorance. Lack of knowledge or information. Lack of not. So it says, on top of not wanting to keep God's commandments, they have another lack of knowledge or information, meaning they, they love that ignorance. They live in ignorance. They don't try to figure out what's going on. They accept what their master told them. Like we read about in uh, 1 Maccabees 1, about a, you know, uh, um, uh, consenting to Esau's religion. We do that. That's how we're in that ignorance, because we don't look nothing up. We just go at whatever the hell they say. Keep reading. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God. Read. But whereas they live in great war of ignorance, uh -huh. those so great plagues call they peace. Do, do our people not do that? All this nonsense going on, they say we at peace. We good. We free. We could do whatever we want. That's the great war of ignorance. Read. For while they slew their children in sacrifice. Uh -huh. Abortions, or, right? Well, today, that's abortions. Read. Or use secret ceremonies or made reveling of strange rites. Uh -huh. They kept neither lives nor marriage any longer undefiled. You see that? They don't keep marriage. We just re seen a video where all sisters said, I don't want marriage. I want a one night stand. All of it is defiled. Read. But either one slew another treacherously uh -huh. or grieved him by adultery. Is that not us today? That's black people. That's black people. Them niggas right there. Read. So that there reign in all men without exception blood, manslaughter, death, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumult, perjury, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind, disorder in marriages, adulteries, and shameless uncleanness. That's 17 more demons. 17 more. Living in that great war of ignorance. So it says, disorder in marriages and changing of kind. That's what we're seeing with the overt sexualization. Disorder in marriages, changing of kind. That's what they're pushing to keep us from becoming that nation. To keep us from bringing those saviors forth. That's, uh, you read verse 26, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Give me Revelation 18 and 4. Read that. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Uh -huh. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. You see that? We have to come out of America. Come out of Babylon and the ideologies that they hold. We Listen, especially for y'all watching online, stop following after the ways of Babylon. We are, you're going to get yourself and your family killed. All right? Stop dealing with this overt sexualization. Don't partake in that. Don't, don't be like them on Instagram. Don't go get the BBLs. Don't go do all this crap that's going to destroy your family. Come back to the Bible. Come out of Babylon. Come back to God. Keep the commandments. Is that it on that verse? That ye be not partakers of her sin, uh -huh. and that ye receive not of her plague. Why? Because America is going to be destroyed. The scriptures say this place is going to be destroyed within an hour. And one hour is going to be destroyed. So you're doing all this crap just to be killed. Don't fall for the for the uh for the uh what's it called the um don't fall for the okie doke. Give me 2 Corinthians 6:17, last scripture. 2 Corinthians 6:17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Be separate, read. Say of the Lord uh -huh. and touch not the unclean don't things. Don't touch their evil. Don't deal with this stuff. Don't be on, don't fall for the for a, the banana in the tailpipe. Don't fall for it. Don't don't fall for the uh the sexualization, all the other nonsense. Don't get hoodwinked. That's what I, that's what that means. Y'all over here looking crazy. Anyway, keep playing. I mean, keep reading. And I will receive you. And the Lord said, Don't touch those the unclean thing, and I will receive you. All right. So I pray y'all got understanding from the, the class. And see how bad that sexualization really is and how it's destroying our communities, we can fix it. Sisters, make sure you um don't don't fall, you know, don't don't fall victim to the to that overt sexualization. Stay in the scriptures.
Stay in the scriptures. All right? Don't, don't fall for that nonsense. We need y'all to be the example for the other women out there so they can repent as well. All right? So with that, let me say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.